Hello and welcome to the PropTech Hot Seat and iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we explore the trends and technologies driving innovation across the built environment. The show is brought to you in partnership with PropTech Ireland, the hub for innovators, investors and industry leaders. In the PropTech Hot Seat today is Lucas Balak, CEO and co-founder of Spaceflow, a company that elevates the digital experience within buildings. Spaceflow produces a tenant engagement experience product for the real estate industry, empowering the concept of space as a service, which we've discussed here at length many times, for innovative landlords who place customer satisfaction and ESG at the heart of their operations. Lucas, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the invitation, Carol. Pleasure to be here. Uh, space as a service is something we've explored and in fact we've had kind of the the father dare I say grandfather of space mm-hmm. as a service Anthony slumbers as a guest uh, many many times here and certainly five six years ago uh tenant experience was not something that was a huge focus for the real estate industry mm-hmm. and that has absolutely turned around so talk to us about the the space flow offering um what is the core offering that you're that yeah, you're bringing to the market today absolutely so um in short space flow has three key verticals uh for a solution so think of our solution as a mobile app for tenants or residents you know the end users whoever who basically uh, is living or working in a specific building. Um, and then we have the administration portal. Uh, that's for the building managers or community manager, anybody who is managing the relationships with tenants. So that's in terms of the, the, the structure of the product. Um, in terms of the features of, or how we help the market, you know, to transform, to, to operate digitally and bring these meaningful, you know, or better experiences across uh, commercial and residential uh, buildings or portfolios. We have a set of three uh, packages. Uh, One is focused on the digital operations. So uh, you can imagine features focused on communication between landlord and tenants, uh, you know, resource booking. So all the flexible amenities uh, that are being provided by landlords, tenants can easily book. Uh, and pay for them. You can imagine features like help desk. So when some when you have some issue or something is broken, you can easily report it uh, to to the management. So that's the digital operations. In short, the second part uh, or package, how we call it, is set of features focused on community. Uh, so we believe uh, that where you work or live, it has a lot to do with all the other people that are there with you. Uh, and, and sort of you create a, a community with everybody. So uh, Spaceflow helps uh, landlords to facilitate these community communities and get from them important feedback. Uh, we have, for example, feature that uh, that focus on tenant satisfaction. So we can also sense, you know, is this tenant uh, in a in a good state or are, are they happy? Are they willing to, you know? Uh, continue uh, in in you know uh, in, in 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 having this service going forward, or maybe you will you will you are risking their churn. Um, obviously, features like group chat, events, test the community part, and the very last one. That's what we call smart building, uh, and there you can uh, think of features or use cases such as mobile access uh, so you don't need any plastic cards but you use the same app the same phone to to open your doors uh, think of features like parcel management so you open the locker when when you get some uh, when you expect a delivery for example into your resident um, or visitor management or lastly i would mention um, the uh, smart metering uh, gamification which is something we are uh, really uh, proud of and now now uh, trying to introduce it to the market in order to help tenants to be educated and you know on top of the latest well-being data but also energy consumption from from their unit or from their floor uh, and to potentially also gamify them in a way that you know it helps landlords to reach the net zero targets or any other sustainable ESG um, goals that they have set as a as a business. So that's 
our view uh, on, on, on tenant experience, free verticals, digital operations, community, and smart building. And as you can imagine, pretty holistic uh, platform or solution, but that's w- all what it's about, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it is a holistic approach in order to be on top of the customer experience and, and, and space and service. So, uh, okay. Th- and thank you. Thank you for going through that because um, there's, there's a huge amount of that. So let's break it down because it's very different when you're trying to talk about maybe the ESG credentials, because obviously, say, for example, the, the landlords are fully aware of that. They understand their compliance. They know their best practice. They know the targets they're trying to hit. But actually yep. trying to do that in a way that not only doesn't compromise the resident or the tenant experience, but actually enhances it. Um, there's they're two very different messaging, so it's it can be difficult to get that right. At the start, you talked about space flow in the context of, uh, of I suppose enabling the digital transformation of real estate. And the fact is, we've been talking about this transformation, this digital transformation journey, for close to a decade. Mm. From you, from your experience operating across more than fifty markets. Yeah. Where is the real estate sector in terms of that digital transformation journey? Have we come as far as we think we have? Uh, good question. Uh, I think we still or the industry still has a long way to go, of course. Um, it's definitely not easy for landlords to figure out the, the right approach, but that's fine. That's that's you know how innovation works. And I think we all as an industry are learning uh, even from our mistakes and, you know, trying to figure out the best scalable, also, sc- I think it's important to say scalable uh, model to deploy and, and use innovation across business uh, cases of, 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 of our clients. Um, I think the, 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 the big challenge for for the industry, for, for, our, land, for our clients, uh, landlords, is that obviously there is so many prop tech solutions, uh, pretty fragmented market. So, you need to really you know know well what or identify specific and realistic needs and expectations what you want to uh, achieve with such technology and then to choose the right partners and um, the uh, the important part for 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 landlords is that usually it's not just one partner but you need to bring in and source various uh, solutions so for example I give you example from our perspective. We are a front-end solution, so we are, you know, the uh, the slick, uh, you know, user experience platform that interacts or bridge the interactions between landlords and the end users, tenants. Uh, but then you have so much more on the back end of the operations, like property management systems, uh, that are super important for you know the day-to-day operations. So that's something that, we're, for example, in order to provide the best possible, uh, the best possible. Mm, digital operations plus experience, I would say extremely important combination is to have a property management system combined with a tenant experience platform, which is sort of the you know front end. So that's the front end. Uh, property management is the back end. And then uh, what we see a lot uh, in our in our clients' uh, strategies is that they have also data layer that you know, uh, sources all the important data from the occupancy or or, or lease agreements and, and access, um, uh, smart sensors, and basically based on these, you can uh, you can fully leverage all these solutions to communicate with tenants to to, to set up the right strategy going forward. And uh, you can see you can see how that holistic approach um, would be good for landlords. You know, you're looking at not only improving the tenant experience, which obviously is an important element, but you're also optimizing revenue. Uh, you're ensuring ESG compliance, and and I suppose more importantly, you're providing the data that allows um, that allows uh, p- portfolio owners and the building owners and managers to actually track where they are because monitoring and, and tracking has has been a huge barrier to ESG yeah. compliance in the past. But what are the drivers that you're seeing? I mean, in 2023, mm-hmm. do, you, do you still need to convince landlords on any elements of this? You know, where are the, where's the resistance from the industry coming from? We see, like, definitely a huge progress in, in terms of, you know, how many landlords they 
know what they want to achieve obviously because they are pushed from the regulators and you know they they financial investors on for example the esg agenda which you know our our, our solution is part of uh so we see more and more like true innovators in the industry that knows that you know in order to achieve these uh results like attract and being able to retain tenants like ESG compliance uh like you know smooth digital operations you need strong tech partners and they come they approach us and they say like you know we understand what we need what we want uh can you provide us this uh set of you know solution or, or features and what is the price in the years and because we are in the market since 2016 uh you know that's uh, still very early days of prop tech it was like us pitching landlords trying to really you know educate which we are still doing today but what i'm saying there is much more much you know more landlord that they really understand what they what they need and then i see a huge uh huge improvement and for us as a prop tech company it's also it's fun to work with some of these really you know progressive innovative landlords such as nrep such as uh, vasakrona ocp and being there you know but they're a close partner on this journey. And that's what we always trying to be like, you know, uh, a, a great collaborative partner for, for, for the joint journey. Uh, I, I, to I love, listen to their feedback. I, I love when to... you, when you describe it as fun working with developers, um, you know, who, who do understand this because I absolutely understand. And I know that, uh prop tech providers listening in here today and some of the industry if they're honest with themselves will uh, you know it'll resonate when you talk about having to educate the market because certainly you know back in 2015 2016 2017 you know really probably right up to the start of covid uh you know this wasn't about sales or demos like it was really about educating the market on why this was important and that's why i think it's really good for us to understand the key drivers that have actually uh jump-started adoption and i know you touched on regulation there but i think the reality is mm -hmm. um covid propelled this much faster than we've seen regulation 100%. do in the in the half decade before that but because you've been in the marketplace since 2016 you might be well placed to to explain to me um what do you consider a smart building today compared to maybe what you did in 2016 mm. i believe like the the obviously the key the key elements say the same smart building is the one that obviously has uh definitely end users in the heart or a core of the operations has a lot of tech sensors uh, and, and smart gadgets, you know, already there from the development phase, be able to to monitor and automate many, uh, many processes. Um, so I think that the concept of smart building hasn't changed that much. Uh, what I would say is that, you know, now every Every developer that is trying to, you know, to design a new project, they have already completely different kind of thinking from day one of of designing uh, and you know developing such such uh, such uh, such project. And the expectations are not only on you know all the providers that were there before, but now a huge part is the tech industry and the tech partners. So. To be fair, it's not really our core market, the develop developers, because we understand like these projects are long, um, you know, uh, taking long time to before before they are finalized. So we focus our uh, our solution and our service mainly to the, to the, to already established portfolios and buildings in order to make them you know position well for today's market needs in order to attract and, and retain tenants. But if you ask me about the smart building concept, I think like again, it is uh, it is something that if you talk to to developer, the expectations on the technologies from day one are completely somewhere else, and that comes also back to the fact that the market is now 
much more mature. You have so many of these uh, certifications like VART score, Well, or Crest. And if you if you you know uh, if you achieve them from day one of when the building is finished, obviously you have much better position to first of all attract retent, attract tenants. Second, also ask higher rent. Uh, so all this obviously is is really important aspect for for developers is driving the innovation. Very good. And one of the core tenets that you talked about, um, one of the core uh, parts of your offering there is around community, and yeah. that that's something that can be quite an intangible. When you get, you know, yes, you can you can say what are the factors that go into it, but there's an intangible quality there as to what really creates a cohesive community within a building and it does mm. go it goes beyond the concierge services and the convenience can you mm-hmm. talk to me a little bit about you know because i think that that's one of the areas where i'm seeing portfolio owners and and um managers struggle because they're saying mm-hmm. all the right things so they mm-hmm. know that community is important they're just not sure how to really make that happen within a building Mm-hmm. You're right. It is a uh, it is definitely a tricky process, uh, and every building is unique, right? Uh, so so every time you need to have kind of like tailored approach in the way how you build community in a specific asset, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's office or residential. Um, you al- always need to have kind of like tailored programming with top notch amenities, events. Uh, and as you said, concierge or a community manager who is facilitating uh, the interactions or connections, right? So all uh, needs to click or ne- needs to work. And because we understand it's not an easy work, uh, we also have our in-house community managers that help our partners or clients to build these programs around their assets. Uh, so either on-site or or, you know, online, uh, we help to build the best tailored content, events, amenities that suit or serve uh, their tenants and help them to be, you know, more productive, happy, satisfied in in in, in all these buildings. Um, we see some clients that they are that progressive that they also hire their own community manager or or uh, concierge or experience manager, however we call them. So that's again. Then it's uh, super fun to work with these because then we we only provide them with the tech part and they can execute everything on 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 their own. Um, since twenty sixteen, have you been tracking? Um, I, I suppose the the business case for community mm-hmm. because again, that's something that comes up quite regularly on uh, panels that I moderate. You know, we talk about community and. It's there's the social aspect, but do we know the business case for this? Do we know at this stage, um, good good community does that turn into longer tenancies? Does yeah. that translate into higher rents? Absolutely. You know, what kind of work has been done around yeah. that? That's really good question. So we are obviously tracking this. Uh, what we see in our, in in our in our clients' portfolios that the strong focus on communities. For example, we have one 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 client in Denmark. That they've been able to decrease, uh, decrease the churn by twenty percent, with you know this tailor focus on the community in that uh, in that project. So that's I think a really great result uh, that shows that the industry, you know, when you put focus on the right things, it can help you not just attract tenants, but obviously prevent churn. And, and boost the loyalty of, 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 of your customers to stay and to really uh, mm, enjoy their time in, 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 in the buildings that you provide. So uh, proof by data, we are obviously uh, tracking this uh, now even with tenant satisfaction score, like I mentioned. So that's another important metric that equips landlords and property managers to be kind of in the driving seat where they see like, is this tenant, you know, uh, at risk or are they happy? So I can expect them to prolong the, the contract. All this is uh, coming back to also the aspect of the community that uh, the building is kind of providing. Um, Lucas, I, I'm 
in this industry almost two decades. And, you know, we we talk a lot about when we talk about digital transformation, we talk a lot about, um, I suppose, culture change. And I think culture change is never something that's really talked about in the context of prop tech because it's almost assumed you couldn't mm. do it unless there was a change of culture. And when you talk about the importance of community, um, I won't say that that wasn't a key feature, because actually, if we look at housing delivery going back a century, we see that actually the community was at the heart of it. But you you touched on something really uh, there that I haven't heard anybody else talk about, and that actually using the technology to get important feedback from the community. Um, Absolutely. In the past, certainly in the more recent past, mm-hmm. com- communication was very much one way between the building mm-hmm. owners and the residents. How do you ensure that important feedback from the residents is getting back in a way that it can be actioned by the building owner or manager? For sure. There are many ways. Uh, so obviously we are fully aware that, you know, uh, as landlords, sometimes you want to, or you want to moderate right these discussions because you don't want this or to you know to 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 twist against you in, in, in you know in any way so uh, for example space law when you do a poll uh, with tenants you can choose you know to be it you know the results to be private only for the managers uh, so that's something that you know you can collect only on your on, on, on your own and based on that obviously you know provide uh, actions or, or feedback to tenant. Uh, similarly, if we if we talk about this tenant satisfaction score again, that's obviously uh, something that's only you know uh, stays with the landlord, uh, and they can act on these these data. So I don't know if I answer your your question no, or concern. You, you do absolutely, and I, I suppose final question. The tenant satisfaction score, I think it's great that you've put a metric on something that was considered quite intangible. So mm-hmm. are, are you getting to the stage or are you seeing are your clients at the stage where they're starting to use that tenant satisfaction score when they're going out into the marketplace um, with new offerings? Uh, to be to be fair, this is this is feature that we are putting life in this quarter or in Q1. So we have like just first few results coming out of this, but it's something that has been demanded from our clients for, for, for some time already. So I'll be able to provide you better, better feedback and data on our next uh, follow-up or interview. Uh, at the time, it's really, it's a fresh, uh, fresh one, but we uh, are now implementing it across, obviously all, all customers that they are uh, willing to, have this feedback, important feedback to drive the operations and so sense uh, the sentiment of their tenants about the service that they provide. Um, Lucas, you're obviously Spaceflow is one of the global leaders. You're in 50 markets. Any plans to enter the Irish marketplace? 15. Not 15. 15, 15. Any plans to, to uh, enter the Irish marketplace? Absolutely, absolutely. We are so we have uh, we have uh, business developers and customer success managers in the UK. Uh, so uh, that's something where, or that's a hub from where we obviously trying to work uh, with with our potential prospects. Uh, even in Ireland, uh, we are not there yet, uh, but obviously that's part of the, the the strategy going forward to also be able to support and collaborate uh, with potential. Mm, partners in Ireland so short answer yes That's very good one, one to watch Lucas one to watch okay thank you so much for for uh, sharing that and for giving us your time today Absolutely. that was that was Lucas Black uh, CEO and co-founder of Spaceflow our thanks to producer Katie Tallon and to the uh, their podcast production team at Hear Me Roar Media if you enjoyed this episode please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out all of the other real estate and construction shows on iProperty Radio Before we go, we want to give a special word of thanks to our sponsor, PropTech Ireland, the hub for innovators, investors and industry leaders in Ireland. Um, So thank you, PropTech Ireland, for supporting the podcast and making these conversations happen. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next episode of the PropTech Hot Seat here on iProperty Radio. 